guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, you're gonna come along with me as I find out what went down at E3. Um, if you already know, that's fine. Uh, but between just the sheer popularity of PlayStation 5s and the fact that I am a PlayStation boy for life, um, I've never owned, nor do I ha ever have any intention of owning an Xbox. Um, so, Nintendo and PlayStation for life, um, and because of the sheer popularity of the PlayStation 5 and the fact that there's a waiting list to get one, despite the fact that it's already been released, um, I see no, no point in getting any new games um, unless they're for my Switch. So, we're going to have a look here at all of the games that I have to look forward to when I can finally get my hands on a PlayStation 5. And um, we'll also be having a look at all of the games that I'm keen for um, on the Switch. So I'm on I IGN, um, and it, yeah, there's already within the first paragraph, there's already a lot to get me excited. Um, so it, uh, this article was uploaded yesterday. I am phone is dead. That is my watch saying. Yes, it was uploaded yesterday. Um, so it says here. Uh, I'm going to pull this up closer to the camera so it doesn't look like I'm staring down at my feet the entire time. Um, so E3 2021 is all over and what a show it was. The biggest online gaming conference gave us plenty of games to be excited about for this year and next year between not what I'm excited for, but Halo Infinite. Um, I will confess though, the uh, I've seen, I believe it was a clip of Halo Infinite's trailer and it does look beautiful. Um, the graphics look amazing, um, but as already stated, I am not a Xbox boy. Um, Elden Ring, Breath of the Wild 2, which I'm keen for. I'm actually currently playing Breath of the Wild myself on the Switch. Um, it is such an expansive game that I've picked it up and put it down and picked it up and put it down um, because I get a little bit of game of fatigue um, and it it, I think the I think the testament there is that the fact that I keep picking it up is because it's such a good game. It is such a good game. I love it. Um, but yeah, to begin with, I wasn't really getting anywhere. Um, struggling to find things to like, you know, I'd have to like go forage for for, for food and weapons to sell so I could get armors so I could get into specific locations so I could take down Divine Beast. I wasn't getting anywhere. There's just a lot of grinding and I'm not I'm not a grinder. I'm not a grinder. Um but I'm now at a position where I have a lot of ancient screws and ancient cores and all that sort of stuff. That I um, ancient bolts I think is one of the other ones. But I can just sell those off and make a absolute killing um, when I just sell off everything. Um, I'm actually struggling to find a camp spot at the moment so I can cook. Um, and I've got so many um, spirit orbs that I need to go back to the main um, Temple of Hylia and spend. Um, so it's it's, it's been it's pretty pretty good. Um, but I have already defeated Water Blight and Thunder Blight Ganon. So I'm, at least as far as the main story quest is concerned, I think I'm about halfway. Um, but again, I don't know. This is still technically my first playthrough. But um, back to the point, Breath of the Wild 2, very keen, very keen. Um, Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. I. I don't really understand the draw of the Rabbids, if I'm being completely honest. Um, like, Rayman is a cool character, it's a cool game, 
I don't understand the Rabbids. And... Because, I mean, they had a... They had a TV show as well, like a cartoon. And I didn't understand why, like, why then. But anyway. Um, For the Horizon 5, Battlefield 2042. And obviously, much more than that came out. Um, and there are, it says here... Plenty of new games to still be announced, so stay tuned for even more at this year's um, all digital E3. Um, so, um, right. Okay, so obviously that that opener there came. Before it was updated because it looks like they've gone through and crossed everything out as the weekend went on um, okay so it start the e3 started off with a um, a stream, stream next fest, or st sorry, Steam. So all the games that were going to be on Steam. Um, and that was on the Wednesday, the 16th. There was then an Xbox showcase on the Thursday, and it looks like there was a lot there. Whole heap crossed out. Um, Unless that was just its own thing. Uh, Guerrilla Collective, Stomach Games, Netflix Geeked Week. Um, are there any? Okay, here we go. Everything announced at E3. So. The Nintendo Direct at E3 um, says here we've all been waiting. Uh, the Nintendo Direct we've all been waiting for finally happened, and we got to look at all the games that we've been waiting for. The uh, stream kicked off with Kazumi Mishima from the Tekken Universe joining the ranks of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as the penultimate DLC character. So that is character 10, I believe. DLC character 10, uh, and he'd be in the same one, uh, in the same bundle pack that has um, Min Min from ARMS, I believe is one of them, I think Sephiroth um, from the Final Fantasy is in that pack as well, um, is that the one that has Byleth in it as well? Um, so looking very good for whoever this last character is going to be very, very keen to find out. Uh, they also announced Life is Strange Remaster Collection and Life is Strange True Color. Um, he's coming to Nintendo Switch. Um, never really played the Life is Strange games. Um, let me know it down below if I should, if I should um, try them out. Um, because if, if it's something that I should check out, I will. Um, the Worms 2D Brawler is coming to uh, the Nintendo D Village What is the wording in this sentence? The Worms 2D Brawler is coming to the Nintendo D Village is a turn-based RPG Do they mean that is coming to the Nintendo? That would make more sense I'm Just missing a word Anyway uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania what a name um, was announced with a reveal um, uh, like a reveal trailer and an October 5 release date Mario Party Superstars uh, is taking the party online and you'll be able to play with random online users uh, and that game releases October 29 <sighs> yes Nintendo dropped a huge surprise with Metroid Dread a game that will take place after Metroid Fusion, and it's going back to being a 2D platformer. The game is officially the fifth Metroid game, uh, and it'll release on October 8th. Um, I'm going 
we'd have to have a quick look in a second. Can I get Metroid Fusion on the Switch? Because um, as of yet, I don't know that they, I didn't know that there was a Metroid game on the Switch. Let's. Shop opening while I finish this off. Um, Mario Golf Super Rush gave us another look at gameplay and the game modes. Uh, and Nintendo also announced three updates that will include new characters and courses that will come post launch. Um, Monster Hunter Stories 2 Winds of Ruin showed us more footage of the gameplay loop of players should expect. Uh, don't forget to check out the free demo that will release on June 25th. Uh, and your game progress will transfer over to the full game. That's so cool. Uh, I remember a time where you played the demo and you got a certain, you know, you got to play like the tutorial level or maybe level one, and that was it, the demo was over, you just got the credits, and if you got the actual game, you got to start from scratch. Um, it did mean that you got to breeze through those first two levels pretty quickly though. Um, WarioWare Get It Together marks the triumphant return of WarioWare games, uh, and this time it's two-player, and that game launches September 10. That'll be really cool to you uh, to look at. Um, another another multiplayer game um, for the Switch, um, and being an uncle um, who enjoys playing video games with my nephew, uh, that might be one that I will get. Shin Megami Tensei 5 showed off a story and gameplay trailer going over the Catch Them All Demon system in the game and announced a November 12th release date. Um, Dengen Ronpa Decadence, I hope I'm pronouncing the first word properly, uh, is a newly announced three game collection that also adds the uh, Dengen Ronpa S Ultimate Summer Camp virtual board game. Interesting. Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater showed off a new reveal trailer and promised to release it later this year, obviously with no date attached. Advanced Robots Reboot Camp is a remaster of the first two Advanced War games uh, and finally coming to the Switch. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, one of the games that was announced that you cannot get away from on social media, um, if you've been on social media at all since E3. You've seen trailers and, and promotional material for it. Um, Two Point Campus, Just Dance 2022, Dragon Ball Z, Kakarot, um, plus a new Power Awakens set, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. I thought, they were, I thought that already had a remaster. I'm, I swear I got the Pro Skater remaster on, unless this is like, it's finally come to the Switch. That might be the case. Uh, Doom Eternal, The Ancient God Part 1, Strange Brigade, um, also all announced as coming to Nintendo Switch. Pyro Warriors Age of Calamity announced its first DLC Wave 1, Pulse of the Ancients, will be available on June 18, so that's already available as of this, as, as of recording this video, uh, so certainly as of its upload. Uh, Nintendo also reconfirmed Skyward Sword HD is still coming on July 16, so less than a month away for that. Um, we're hoping for a Nintendo Switch Pro, but the only hardware we got was a new Legend of Zelda game and watch. Um, this Legend of Zelda focused game and watch handheld packs in the three classic Legend of Zelda, Zelda 2 Link's Adventure and Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Um, and we obviously finally got a look at the Breath of the Wild sequel with Floaty Islands en uh, enemy platforms with floating islands and enemy platforms on the back of Rock Monsters, New Sheikah Tablet Tools and it and confirmed its 2022 release date. That is going to be a, uh, a must get. We then go into the Capcom. So before I do that, I want to have a look at what we call 
Metroid Fusion, wasn't it? That was the one I was looking for. I'll have to double check that link once I've finished making this video because I am very, very keen to get into a Metroid game. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the Capcom presentation was short and sweet with updates on Resident Evil and Monster Hunter games. Uh, Reversed announced it will be going live next month in July 2020. Uh, and Capcom also announced the development of Resident Evil Village DLC has just begun. Uh, Monst Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin, showed a new story trailer and a roadmap of updates. The Wolf Palamute from Monster Hunter Rise will also come to Monster Hunter Stories 2 as a monster companion. Uh, if you want to give Wings of Ruin a try, a trial version of the game will be on the eShop starting on July 25th. Uh, and then, again, uh, transfer your save demo to the full game. Um, Monster Hunter Rise will also be getting an update 3.1 soon that will add downloadable uh, event quests like the Al Almadron Fashion Victim quest, Fooled by the Flooded Forage, sorry, Fooled in the Flooded Forage quest, Rampage Mardi, Mardi Gras, as in like M U double D I, as opposed to uh, Marty bro. Uh, Heart of a Hero, an icy plate so bright. Um, an update will also include new cosmetics as well. Greatest Attorney One and Greatest Attorney Two Resolve. Short the new story trailer and gameplay for the Ancient Japan uh, spin on the original Ace Attorney series. Um, that was an indie showcase. Um, PC, PC gaming, obviously got its own, Square Enix, um, its biggest reveal being the Guardians of the Galaxy 1, um, uh, this isn't just a, so see, this isn't just a big update for Marvel's Avengers, but rather a completely new game featuring a whole cast, a whole cast including Star Lord, Drax, Gamora, Rocket, and Groot. Um, the, game look, the game looks like it'll have a lengthy single player campaign and won't fall into the same multiplayer live game pitfalls th that Avengers made. The lengthy gameplay trailer showed us the first part of the gameplay level and looks like you'll get to see some pretty exotic alien planets. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like you'll be able to switch between characters yet but you can pull off a super mode with all the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, Final Fantasy fans will be glad to hear that the first six games will be coming back as a Pixel Remaster collection that will be available on Steam and Mobile. Legend of Mana announced it will be available on June 24 with a new uh, teaser trailer that showed us more of its animated cinematics. Um, not to be forgotten, Marvel's Avengers revealed a continuation of the main story campaign that'll come later this month. Wasteland Patrol starring um, Hawkeye will come in July, then in August you'll finally be able to play as Black Panther. Um, Babylon's Fall is a brand new hack and slash action game from Platinum Game developers who worked on Near Automata. Uh, this time, instead of post-apocalyptic Age of Machines, you'll be battling out with huge monsters and deity in a high fantasy setting. Um, they also showed off the Life is Strange Remastered Collection. Um, and that for, um, lastly, Team Ninja showed off Stranger of Paradise of Final Fantasy Origin as, it, um, as its retelling of Final Fantasy 1 with Souls-like action combat. Sounds pretty good. Um, Xbox and Bethesda showcase because I'm pretty sure Bethesda's now solely doing Xbox games, which is a little sad. Um, 
the Bethesda games out are a much loved commodity. Um, but I guess when we consider that it's not really a weight on getting a um, Series X or S, but there is on a PlayStation 5, having a draw card like Bethesda um, is gonna, gonna help them out. Um, Gearbox Entertainment gave us a behind the scenes look at its upcoming Borderlands the movie. Heck yes. If Krieg is not in that movie, I will riot. Um, and uh, I also hope that it helps expand the lore of the Sirens as well. Because um, between the Siren class and Krieg, I, uh, I, ha I have my mains in pretty much every game. Um, Borderlands 2 is lucky, I have two mains. Um, I will play that game with either character. Um, so a lot of replayability there. Um, as expected, we get another look at Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, this time with a developer talk. It gives us a close look at the monsters, such as wyverns and goblins. Uh, Godfall announced its new Fire and Darkness, Fire and Darkness Lightbringer expansion, that will release on August 10th. Um, the makers of Tribes of Tribes of Tribes of Midgar. Is that just supposed to be Tribes of Midgar and they've just messed up with writing Tribes of twice? Anyway, uh, also gave us a bit more information about the gameplay cycle of the game. Um, that the game will involve uh, gathering and crafting in the day and battling hordes of monsters at night. Which sounds strikingly similar to the original concept of Fortnite. Um, it also sounds exactly like what... Um, survival mode on Minecraft is uh, just hopefully with um, graphics that aren't pixels um, because and I know that that's like the whole aesthetic of the game is that it looks like it is made of pixels um, but having something that looks you know, a, little bit, a little bit more beautiful to look at would be nice uh, Gearbox gave us a reminder that Homeworld 3 is still in production, but we didn't get any teaser trailer or images of it. Um, Ubisoft. Ubisoft. Um, is the first major show of E3. Uh, with newly announced AAA games and our first gameplay, the first look gameplay of previously announced titles. Uh, Rainbow Six threw down the gauntlet first with a cinematic trailer for the new Extraction. Uh, expansion releasing on September 6, um, which if I'm not mistaken is fighting against aliens, which is pretty cool. Uh, it looks like operators will have plenty of new tools including a lightning shooting claymore, a thunder sword, yes, plus a new react, a new react light and knife. All of them will be upgradable as they play too. Players won't have uh, all their operators at first either, they'll have to extract them from captivity first. So you start off with, like, in a single player, and you have to go and get the other five members you've did. That'd be that. Okay, that'd be pretty cool. Um, it's also getting a PC and Stadia crossplay update on June 30, and then crossplay for all platforms is coming in early 2022. Um, so by mid-2022, doesn't matter what platform you've got Rainbow Six on, you will be able to play with your friends, which is cool. Cross compatibility is always a good draw card for a game. Uh, Rocksmith Plus is a new subscription service that takes music games to the next level with music learning programming created in partnership with Gibson Guitars. Uh, the game uses your smartphone as a microphone so you can use an acoustic or electric guitar without any additional equipment. Starting to actually be able to play Music games like Guitar Hero with your actual guitar would be sick. Um, imagine just chucking on Guitar Hero uh, and using Rocksmith Plus, and that's band practice. That'd be so cool. Um, 
not only are you, you know, practicing a, a musical instrument um, and potentially furthering a music career for yourself, but it's just game nights with the boys, if anyone asks. That's all it is. Um, Riders Republic is the latest extreme outdoor game from Ubisoft. Uh, game debuted with a game tra gameplay trailer show, uh, showing activities like mountain biking, wingsuit flying, and snowboarding. Instead of just going on tracks, it looks like Riders Republic will revolve around the open world gameplay similar to, similar to Forza Horizon 4 and The Crew 2. Um, which, look, mountain biking, wingsuiting, snowboarding, these all sound like things that I could get, get on top of. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, The Siege of Paris got a new feature trailer showing off the new setting, weapons, and other equipment players can expect. The Discovery Tour is another free update coming this fall, and will let you play as NPCs living through their daily life and get history lessons on the setting and time period of the world, which I don't think is something that any of the other games have done. Um, it'd be cool if there was a Discovery Tour for, um, I don't know, that it's unlikely, but it'd be cool if there was one for Odyssey. Um, Following that, Ubisoft has promised to deliver more expansions for its second year of uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla content. So, no new Assassin's Creed game yet. Um, maybe 2023 or 2024. Um, we got another look at Far Cry 6 with a story trailer showing off the performance chops of John Carlo Esposito's Anton Castillo. Um, and you know if a game has Giancarlo Esposito's face and voice in it, that it's that character is going to be badass. Uh, it also appears players will be able to play as Vas, who I believe is from Far Cry 3. Um, Pagan Min and Joseph Seed. I don't know where they're from, but I would assume this is Far Cry 6, and that'd be 4 and 5s villains um, as part of Far Cry 6's season pass content um, so being able to play as past villains is, is pretty cool um, Ubisoft was the one that announced Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope uh, and then the last surprise of the show was a new Avatar Frontiers of Pandora game so far we've only seen a cinematic trailer, but it looks like we'll be able to explore the vast world of Pandora from the eyes of a Na'vi protagonist. Um, I would expect learning to ride their horses and fly on the big dragon things um, would be skills that you can upgrade. Um, but that would be, that'd be pretty cool. Um, Gorilla Collective Showcase. Um, I'm honestly, just to be completely honest, trying to find where the PlayStation stuff is. Um, interesting. There's a game called Rawman Food Fighter Arena, which is a competitive soup slinging game where you'll roll a meatball through a net that mixes the wackiness of Rocket League, Splatoon, and Katamari. Which sounds interesting. Where? I think Ever Loving God is the... Did Sony even go this year? I'm literally just scrolling through to try and find that now. Um, World War Z Aftermath. Um, which is an enhanced edition of Saber Interactive's original co-op zombie horde shooter. It's coming. Bramble the Mountain King um, by Dimfrost Studios. Uh, an intense horror platformer uh, with gameplay reminiscent of Limbo and Little Nightmares. Um, conversely, Skatebird is a much more light-hearted game, all about skateboarding as a little bird, in case the... Uh, title was not obvious enough. Um, I 
the Netflix Geeked Week had zero game announcements, but it was a gaming adjacent event. Uh, the stream started by giving us a look at League of Legends Arcane. Uh, this will be the second animated series based on a MOBA game after Dota Dragon's Blood. Cuphead's also getting an animated Netflix spin-off called The Cuphead Show, and it follows the exploits of the titular character and his brother Mugman. Um, Castlevania series, uh, the anime, um, announced the series. We continue with a new show featuring uh, Richter Belmont, the son of Cypher and Trevor, and Maria Renard in 1792 France, caught up in the French Revolution. Sam Fisher returns for duty in a new Splinter Cell animated series. We got our first look with a teaser image. Um, it also announced two anime adaptations of Far Cry. The first one is Captain Laserhawk, a Dragonblood remix, uh, and it's based on Far Cry 3 Dragonblood. So expect plenty of 90s callbacks from this retro cyber styled series. Uh, the image they've got here for it looks really cool. Um, the second Far Cry series was only presented with a Far Cry logo in front of a jungle setting, so this mystery series will probably be based on the more traditional games. We got a second, uh, we got a look at the second season of The Witcher with the teaser trailer, and it looks like it all prominently features Siri. Netflix also teased WitcherCon on July 9th, which appears to be a merger of the game and Siri slash book universes. Um, so all things Witcher. Uh, and then lastly, Netflix revealed it's working on a live action Resident Evil show, uh, and it already has full casting, including Lance Reddick as Albert Wesker. Summer Game Fest kickoff live. Um, is there anything here we haven't? Death Stranding Director's Cut coming to PS5. New trailers for Metal Slug Tactics and Jurassic World Evolution 2. Uh, Lost Ark. Um, Korean MMO. Announced it's finally getting a Western release later this fall. Um, the Among Us developer Innersloth also showed off a new hide and seek game mode, new in game roles, new cosmetics, and a teaser for five new maps. Um, which, between the new mode, the new roles, the new cosmetics, and the new maps, uh, means that uh, Disguised Toast and, and um, all of his friends will have plenty more content to come if you uh, only follow him for his Among Us um, videos. Um, I do enjoy coming across his videos on Facebook. I waste plenty of hours watching his stuff on Facebook. Um, if you've been waiting for a new side-scroller, Souls-like game, the creators of Sultan Sanctuary debuted Sultan Sacrifice with a reveal trailer. Um, Annapurna dropped a new trailer for its third-person platformer with Shadow of Colossus vibes called Solar Ash. Um, and you know if it has vibes of a classic like Shadow of the Colossus, that it's going to be given, you know, there's going to be high expectations for it. Um, the world's shortest tease gave us a look at a new Valorant character coming soon. Um, so there's going, to be, there's going to be a whole heap coming um, for Twitch streamers, which is good to know because I've been thinking of starting my own Twitch as well. So that's good to know. Uh, Two Point Campus was announced as the latest uh, management simulator from the great minds behind Two Point Hospital. Um, Smite unveiled a trailer of its latest cross-media tie-in with Stranger Things full of multiple skins and other cosmetics. Is that, does that mean we're getting a, hold on, does that mean we're getting a Stranger Things game? I hope it, I hope it's essentially a video game version of Dungeons and Dragons considering the, the villains, like the monsters in the first three seasons, um, as well as the main characters playing Dungeons and Dragons. Um, there's a lot of reference to that. Um, which, in case you didn't know, Demogorgon and the Mind Flayer are actual characters from D&D. Um, in D&D, and only in D&D, 
the mind flayer is known as an illithid. Um, but D&D has trademarked that name, so hence they just call it the mind flayer in Stranger Things. Um, Kosh Media announced Prime Whale, its new publishing label, uh, and it plans to release 12 new games, including Payday 3, plus a new Gungrave title and Painkiller title. Um, yeah, um, what have we got here? Anacrusis was introduced as a new Left 4 Dead style co op shooter, headed by former Valve writer Chet Falizek. Uh, the new Tales of Arise trailer gave us a brighter, a big, sorry, a bigger look at the upcoming game's characters, abilities, and more. F9 cars, including the new rocket-powered Pontiac Fiero, are coming to Rocket League. Uh, Blood Hunt is a new battle royale game set in the Vampire: The Masquerade universe that debuted with a trailer and an open alpha before the game's release later this year. Uh, that game company announced Sky: Children of the Light will be coming to Nintendo Switch on June 29th. Uh, Planet of Lana is a cinematic puzzle adventure with a water-painted aesthetic um, that will release on Game Pass and be exclusive to Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One and PC. Um, Aaron Keller from Blizzard made a guest appearance to show off the new Overwatch 2 character models for Baptiste and Sombra. So a new Overwatch game, Capcom presented a new trailer for Monster Hunter Stories 2, Rings of Ruin. Uh, we got our first look at Endless Dragon, a new roguelike and tower defense mash up. Um, long after its Game Awards announcement, we finally got an extended look at the gameplay of Evil Dead the game. Uh, and it looks like a third person zombie action game Dead Rising fans will love. You can look forward to even more zombie games soon as Call of Duty Zombies creator Jason Bundell and Dave Anthony announced they're starting a new studio in partnership with Sony called Deviation Games. Um, and so it does not look like Sony was there at all. Um, which means that there's no new ex uh, new PlayStation exclusives, but that's fine. Um, and like I said, at the, at, at the moment, I think um, Sony's more focused on trying to get its product back, like, like get, get rid of a waiting list so it can get product on shelves so that the people that weren't super keen to get it day of release um, can actually go in and get themselves a PlayStation 5. Um, like me um, but yeah that's all I've got for this video um, let me know what you were most excited to hear about down in the comments below if you're new here please hit the subscribe button and also ring that notification bell um, if you want to be notified when I upload new videos and if you like this one please give it a big old thumbs up and until next time guys keep your head screwed on